Yes, folks, Alan Jones has just given the best commentary uh, regarding the Israel Folau saga that I've heard so far. So I'm going to post that today, and I'm not going to talk much through it, simply because it's so good. Have a look. If social media is to be any guide, and the Israel Folau story is as big as Tiger Woods for all the wrong reasons. I wrote a piece on this in today's Australian newspaper, page two if you have a copy. I made the point that if you dismantle the humbug, the Folau story can be summed up simply. Now for those of you not familiar, Israel Folau is a Polynesian Christian who happens to be the most outstanding rugby union player in Australia today and one of the most outstanding in the world. He's never been reticent about his dedication to the Christian faith. He issued a warning last week on social media to quote, drunks, homosexuals, adulterers, liars, fornicators, thieves, atheists and idolaters that quote, hell awaits you, repent, only Jesus saves. He went on, Jesus Christ loves you and has given you time to turn away from your sin and come to him. Put simply, if this young man is not free to state his religious views, let alone Christian views, we're all in trouble. Mm -hmm. But for doing this, he faces punishment, banishment and termination. His rugby career apparently is over. The fools who run Australian rugby argue he's breached his contract. One might have thought that before proclaiming his guilt, administrators might have given Israel a chance to defend himself. No chance of that. And in an edict reminiscent of a Romanian or Soviet dictator, mm -hmm. he's been banned from playing, banned from earning money, banned from joining his teammates in training and banned from team functions, all in the interests of the values of the game. I made the point today that if the values of the game involve censorship or what's worse, termination of employment for articulating Christian values that are as old as Christianity itself, then we are all in trouble. But of course, this is about money. Qantas, the sponsor, have presumably threatened to pull their sponsorship. The Qantas CEO, Alan Joyce, objects to Israel's posting. Now, of course, Alan Joyce is entitled to his view, though apparently Israel is not. Exactly. Alan Joyce apparently doesn't agree with Israel, but there are thousands in the Qantas family who don't agree with Alan Joyce. Israel's from a devoutly religious Polynesian family. He has not sought to impose his views on anybody. He's merely repeated, as one correspondent wrote at the weekend, what his religion has held for thousands of years. Whether you choose to believe it, it's up to you. And if you don't, then probably you don't believe in hell either. I suspect that had Falau been a Muslim stating exactly the same religious beliefs and was sacked for his trouble, it would have led to calls of Islamophobia. Exactly. The left would have gone nuts. They, they would have protested on the streets. They would have rioted. Uh, they would have run to the Muslim communities begging for forgiveness. And they would have virtue signaled to the world that we are the good people. Well, this stuff's been going on for too long, and the whinges and the whiners always seem to prevail. They want to shut up anyone with whom they do not agree. Interesting that the drunks and the liars and the thieves and the atheists are not complaining. It's also interesting that the ones who are complaining expect tolerance towards their viewpoint, but they won't extend that tolerance to others. Exactly. I should make the point that Israel's Instagram post was liked by several of his teammates. Are they going to be sacked as well? There are a lot of Pacific Island rugby players, I know them around the world, deeply religious, who support Israel Folau. And is not Qantas in partnership with a national airline whose government imposes laws infinitely more damaging to homosexuals than Israel's utterance of his biblical beliefs? I could say more, including the fact that when money takes precedence over morality, young people like Israel Folau condemned for articulating Christian beliefs. Simply because a sponsor is upset, hypocrisy is alive and well. My story today's Australian has drawn at last count over 900 comments. Kevin said, brilliantly written, the thought police have no place in professional sport. We live in a country with freedom of religion or of no religion, and Israel's entitled to his beliefs. Like many, I don't share his theology, but I respect his choice. Neil said, thank you, Alan, for your straight talking an insightful view, totally agree that there is a new persecution here with Christians, the target, and a determination to push the Christian faith out of the public square. Exactly. And folks, when it's totally out, which religion is going to fill the void? 
The answer is obvious, isn't it? To be hidden in people's homes and allowed out only on Sundays and only in the church. And Mike said, the hypocrisy of Rugby Australia and Qantas, articulated by Alan Joyce, beggars belief, Israel was not suggesting homosexuals, etc., be stoned or harmed in any way or even silenced. He was quoting the Judeo-Christian scripture, which is similar to many others of the world's religions in this regard. Who will be the next in the silencing of those quoting other texts? Will it be those quoting Marx? Unlikely. Will it be those quoting Trump? Quite likely. Yes. Rugby Australia has joined a conga line of virtue signalling corporates trumpeting their diversity and inclusion policies that are more about uniformity and exclusion. Mm -hmm. Well, make no mistake, an alarmingly incompetent rugby administration has joined in a battle for the minds of the rugby public, and I'm telling you it's a battle they can't win. Yet again, they're on the wrong side of common sense. Exactly, on the wrong side of common sense. Ah, folks, where have, where have all the Alan Joneses gone? We are fast losing rational thought like that. That was wonderful to listen to. And believe me, folks, rugby supporters are on his side.